Hello and welcome and a good Saturday morning. What could be a better thing to do than taking a self-test in modern portfolio theory from the Cambridge University? The cool thing about this test is I would say you can answer around 70% of the test just by having attended my Python for Finance course or also by just following my videos over the years. I will go over the questions, provide the answers and a short explanation and I recommend you to pause the video or just follow the link I will post below. Try it on your own and let me know how much you've solved. Before we are starting important, this is a multiple choice test, so more than one answer or only one answer can be right, making guessing a lot harder. We are going over the first 15 questions. I want to see if you enjoy that kind of content and if you do, we will go over the next 15. First one, the disadvantage of using variance as a risk measure is it ignores higher moments. It gives equal weight to upward and downward deviations from the expectation. It can be used in a forward and backward looking way. This one is quite straightforward. So first of all, A must be right because the problem with variance is it doesn't take skewness into account. In specific asset or stock returns are often skewed. Meaning for instance, there are more very large positive returns than there are very large negative returns. And the variance is not taking this skewness of the return distribution into account. So A, right answer. B, also right, super important. When you take the variance as a risk measure, you don't care about upward movements. Every investor, including me and hopefully you, cannot be more happy about upward deviation from the return expectation, assuming you are long or hold the asset. The variance, however, is treating upward and downward movements the same. So you have an equal weight of up and downward movement, which in terms of risk measurement can be a disadvantage. C is wrong simply because it's a historical view. So final answer is A and B. Second one, the expected return of a portfolio of assets is the sum of the expected asset returns, the weighted average of the expected asset returns, the weighted average of the expected asset returns corrected for correlation, none of the above. Let's start with A. A must be wrong because simply take a portfolio of Apple and Microsoft. Let's just say you have invested 50% each and both assets were rising by 5%. Then A would mean the portfolio return is 10%, which isn't the case as you have to take the weight into account. So the portfolio return in this case would be 5%. Or in other words, answer B, the weighted average of the expected asset returns. C has nothing to do with the expected return, so that's wrong, and therefore D must also be wrong. So final answer, B. By the way, I've shown this calculation in detail in my course and also on YouTube. Three, the variance of a portfolio of assets is the sum of the asset variances, the weighted average of the asset variances, the weighted sum of the asset variances and covariances, none of the above. This is related to the previous one. In my course and the YouTube videos, I've shown in detail how you calculate the variance of a portfolio. So A is definitely wrong. It's, it's just not just the sum. B is also wrong because it's not just the weighted average of the asset variances, but it is C, the weighted sum of the asset variances and covariances. Therefore, D also must be wrong. So final answer is C. As said, check the course videos or the YouTube videos for a detailed calculation of both the portfolio variance and also the portfolio return. Four, unsystematic risk is the risk that disappears through diversification, market risk, the total risk of a poorly diversified portfolio, none of the above. That is a definition question. So A is right here, the risk that disappears through diversification. All others are wrong, so A Final answer. Similar one, systematic risk, same answer possibilities here. So straightforward, systematic risk is market risk per definition. Nothing more to add here. Six, the variance of a poorly diversified portfolio measures the risk that disappears through diversification, market risk, the total risk of that portfolio, none of the above. Straightforward one, as the answer is, you're measuring the total risk of a portfolio using the variance or standard deviation. So it's actually a combination of A 
and B, which is C. So the final answer is C, the total risk of the portfolio. Seven, the diversification effect reduces the total risk of a portfolio, the systematic risk, the unsystematic risk of a portfolio. You can only reduce the unsystematic risk using diversification, but that also means you can reduce the total risk of the portfolio. So A and C are right. That's kind of a trap question, to be honest. Eight, the diversification effect increases with the number of assets in a portfolio because asset variances tend to cancel out, asset returns tend to cancel out, the number of covariances increases faster than the number of variances. I think that is a very good question. And if you think about my portfolio videos, adding more assets increases the complexity of the covariance calculation. For adding an additional asset, you have to take the covariance to all other assets in the portfolio into account. These covariances scale up and therefore have an effect on the diversification effect. So clearly C is the right answer here. As a recommendation with the help of my course or videos, calculate the portfolio of N assets and then add more and more assets to it, you will see that the diversification effect will increase. So final answer is C, there is no canceling out of variances or returns. Nine, the beta of a poorly diversified portfolio measures the risk that disappears through diversification, market risk, total risk of a portfolio, None of the above. I've covered that in previous videos and in my course. Beta, per definition, is market risk, period. All other answers are wrong, so final answer is B. 10. The beta of an individual asset measures the asset's contribution to portfolio variance, the asset's sensitivity for changes in portfolio returns, the asset's systematic risk, the ratio of the assets covariance with the portfolio and the portfolio variance. Tricky question per design as all answers are right. It is the assets contribution to portfolio variance. It also measures the sensitivity for changes in portfolio returns. It is by definition the systematic risk and it is also by definition or mathematical definition the ratio of the assets covariance with the portfolio and the portfolio variance. So not much to add or explain here since all answers are based on the understanding of what the beta is measuring and how it is mathematically defined. So all answers are right. A, B, C, D. 11. Variances are additive. Total variance equals weighted sum of the variances of the parts across. Assets in a portfolio, projects and activities in a company, debt and equity in a company, all of the above, none of the above. That's a tricky one. So in general, variances of e.g. two components are additive if the covariance of these two components is zero. Otherwise, you need to take the covariance into account. And assets in a portfolio always have a covariance. Projects and activities always have a covariance. Debt and equity, covariance. So the final answer here is E because it doesn't apply here, as all of the mentioned have a covariance other than zero. So final answer, E. Same question, but for betas. Betas are additive. Total beta weighted sum of the betas of the parts across assets, projects, debt equity, all of the above, none of the above. In this case, let's say you have a two asset portfolio, then the portfolio beta is actually the weighted sum of the component betas, meaning 0.5 times beta of first asset plus 0.5 times beta of the second asset. So in this case, this also applies for the rest, project, debt equity, and so on. So final answer is D, all of the above. 13, the diversification effect of combining two assets is maximal if the correlation coefficient is minus one, correlation coefficient is one, correlation coefficient is zero, none of the above. I think this is one of the easiest ones if you give it a thought. When do you have maximum diversification? Assume you have a two asset portfolio again and one of the assets is falling by 50% 
and the other one is falling by 50% as well. That means that the correlation coefficient is 1, so plus 1, because they are moving exactly the same. But the desired diversification effect would be the exact opposite, namely an asset rising by 50% while the other, other one is dropping by 50%. And that is exactly when the correlation coefficient is minus 1. So final answer is A. Very popular thing to ask in interviews, by the way. 14. The market risk of a portfolio increases if an asset with a beta smaller one is added to the portfolio, an asset with a beta larger one is added to the portfolio, an asset with a beta equals one is added to the portfolio, none of the above. Now again, if you have followed my content, you know that adding an asset with a beta larger one increases the overall market risk of the portfolio. Logic is straightforward. Imagine you add an asset which is swinging more than the market. Whenever the market swings, the asset swings even more and is part of your portfolio, so it will increase the market risk of your portfolio. So, A is wrong, C, market risk would be the same, final answer is B. Markowitz efficient portfolios can, cannot, be, cannot be replaced by portfolios that, so it's a cannot, it's a negative question here. So what is not possible here? Offer a higher expected return for the same risk, offer a higher expected return for a higher risk, offer a lower expected return for a lower risk, offer a lower risk for the same expected return, offer a lower expected return for the same risk. The only two right answers can be a higher expected return for the same risk and a lower risk for the same expected return. Everything else would be possible. Just imagine the efficient frontier line I've drawn in some of my tutorial videos also in my Python for Finance course. You cannot get over this line. So you, you would have a portfolio which is above this line and that isn't possible in Markowitz efficient portfolio case. So you can only be on that line. So A cannot be, you cannot get a higher expected return for the same level of risk. There is the efficient portfolio and you cannot be above that level. So for the same level of risk, you cannot get a higher expected return. And the same is true for the other case. You cannot have a lower risk for the same expected return. So these two aren't possible in Markowitz's efficient portfolio world. Check the videos on Efficient Frontier in either my course or YouTube videos and just take a look at the shape of the frontier. It will become crystal clear then. And that's it for this video. Let me know how much you've solved. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.